If you were to rank the greatest monsters in history, which ones would you put at the top? And who would you consider the worst? Creating such a list would undoubtedly be challenging. But what if I told you that one of these monsters, possibly on your list, is mentioned in the Bible? Do you know about Leviathan? Did you know its origins are in the sacred texts of Christianity, and many Christians believe it existed or still exists? You'll soon find out why Leviathan is considered the worst monster in the Bible, and certainly deserves a top spot on your list. The Bible is the most famous book of all time. Not only that, it is the holy book of the religion with the most followers worldwide, Christianity. The followers of Christ have surpassed the one billion mark. Additionally, the Bible is the most translated book in history. Its significance is so immense that when Gutenberg invented the printing press, the Bible was chosen as the first book to be printed. Within this work, there are historical passages like the life of Jesus, Moses, and books such as Revelation, which describes the end of times, and Genesis, which talks about the creation of the world. But if you read the Bible more closely, you'll find another being that appears several times. You've probably heard its name, but you might not know its origin. I'm talking about a terrifying monster called Leviathan. Leviathan is first mentioned in the Old Testament, specifically in the book of Job, chapter 41. Described as the greatest sea monster, it resembles a serpent or dragon, a powerful being that instilled fear in many. Only God or someone chosen by him could defeat this creature. In chapter 41, while reprimanding Job, God challenges him to catch the monster with a simple hook, something Job could never do, demonstrating God's power and man's impotence against nature. In the book of Psalms and Isaiah, Leviathan is mentioned in different contexts, but always as a giant monster. Interestingly, not only Christians have scriptures about Leviathan, Jewish records also reference this sea monster. There is even another monster sent by God to kill it. So, did Leviathan originate in the Bible or Jewish scriptures? To some extent, neither. Some historians suggest that the story of Leviathan has many influences from a goddess in Sumerian Babylonian mythology named Tiamat. The presence of Leviathan remained strongly embedded in the collective unconscious during the Age of Exploration. There were numerous accounts from shipwreck survivors and sailors describing a creature with Leviathan's characteristics. If you've ever seen old maps from the era of Great Discoveries, you've probably noticed depictions of large sea monsters. This doesn't mean that sailors actually saw Leviathan. Historians believe that people at sea likely mistook parts of whales or giant squids for the monster, or perhaps alcohol consumed during voyages influenced their imaginations. Our brains constantly try to make sense of everything around us, and when they can't, they associate unknowns with things we already know or have heard about. To this day, no monster of Leviathan's magnitude has been found, but that doesn't mean it has disappeared from people's consciousness. Leviathan remains quite popular in Western society, often represented in different forms. This monster has been portrayed in movies, TV shows, and cartoons, often stripped of its religious context and given roles as villains or major threats in various stories. Leviathan's popularity isn't solely because it was a biblical creature, although that certainly helped. Its representation has also been extensively studied. Consider whether a monster of Leviathan's size actually existed as described in the Bible, or if it was a way for the authors to convey their messages. Remember, some books of the Bible were written when Christians were persecuted, and some authors couldn't refer directly to specific people or events. Thus, metaphors and analogies were used. When we create monsters, they often symbolize something. Fear, phobias, bad qualities, or disasters. Just as you can interpret a monster's representation as real or not, you can also interpret the Bible literally, believing every word as concrete truth or as allegory. Leviathan has also inspired works that attempt to explain human nature. The mathematician, philosopher, and writer Thomas Hobbes wrote his most famous book in 1651. The full title is quite lengthy, Leviathan or the Matter, for me and power of a commonwealth ecclesiastical and civil. Therefore, the book is commonly known as Leviathan, and that's the name we'll use from now on. In Leviathan, Hobbes considers the state to be an oppressive monster that holds all power. Just as Job could never catch the monster, an individual could never stand against the state alone. However, for Hobbes, this monster was necessary. 
He believed that the greatest enemy of man is man himself. You might recognize the phrase man is a wolf to man from this book. Thus, a creature that takes away our total freedom is necessary as long as it keeps us in a state of peace. To this day, no one has found Leviathan, and its role has been attributed to a ruler. More recently, a new discovery made the idea of this gigantic monster seem real again, rather than just a biblical allegory or a representation in a sociology textbook. Scientists at Northwestern University in the United States, led by geophysicist Steve Jacobson, claim to have discovered a vast underground ocean beneath the Earth's surface. Their research was published in the journal Science in June 2014. The researchers, who spent decades reaching this conclusion, assert that about 700 kilometers below the surface lies a massive reservoir of water, similar to an ocean. This reservoir is located in a type of rock called ringwoodite. The researchers suggest that the amount of water there could exceed the volume of all the Earth's oceans combined by three times. This discovery could alter studies on the origin of water on our planet if it withstands further scientific scrutiny. Moreover, the study sparked conspiracy theories suggesting that Leviathan was never found because it resides in this vast underground ocean. The intriguing part of this theory is that with today's tools, it's impossible to prove it wrong. The studies were conducted using calculations and measurements of the Earth's crust, core, and mantle. However, it's also impossible to confirm that Leviathan exists in this subterranean ocean, as we cannot prove life exists there. This is why Leviathan is such a terrifying and complex monster. It can be interpreted as a gigantic sea monster with the form of a dragon or serpent that only God can kill, and at the same time, it can symbolize something that resides in the human imagination, fear, extreme difficulty, or even the state. Few creatures can transcend from the physical realm to the realm of ideas. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.